Hey friends, welcome. This is Gonzo. Thank you for stopping by. I believe that we are entering into a dark age. The age that we've been in has been a golden age, an age of unprecedented growth. But this growth is ending now. And the era that we're moving into, we don't know how long it's going to last. We don't know we don't know how 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 much decline there will be but we do know that it's going to last at least at least 20 to 50 years that this this new era that we're moving into is one of continuous decline and reduction so the the age that we've just been in has been we've just experienced this unprecedented growth unprecedented growth we've been here on the planet for 300,000 years and in just 100 years 200 years we've seen rapid rapid expansion of the population of our productive capacity how much we produce um, like our our yearly harvest as a planet and our technology has has increased dramatically we went from horses to spaceships in, in 10 generations and in order for all of this growth to have taken place, we needed to consume more and more energy each and every year. So growth and energy are highly, highly correlated. So growth in GDP is, is tightly correlated to growth in energy production and oil production. So as oil production falls, our, our GDP growth falls. As, as energy production falls, our, our GDP falls. As it, as it grows, so does GDP. See how tightly correlated these lines are? That is because GDP is energy. Like it, these are almost, it's almost the same thing. Um, as there's more energy in the system, we can produce more. So energy is, is, is either expensive or it's cheap. And we've had cheap, cheap energy. We've been able to, we've been able to fly things across the planet we can buy avocados from Mexico when you're in Canada. Uh, these things are going to change as the price of energy becomes more expensive. So part of the problem is that we are over re overly reliant upon fossil fuels. 80% of the energy that we consume comes from fossil fuels. And in order for there to be growth, we need to be able to grow our production of these fossil fuels so you can see that this year we've used more coal than any other year in the history of of our of our civilization and same with oil and same with natural gas and same with trees actually um, but at some point we reach this physical limit it's not possible for there for us to be able to pull an exponential amount of oil out of the ground each and every year and an exponentially increasing amount of, of oil each and every year forever at some point we reach the physical limit and we can see evidence of us having reached this physical limit in oil um, in various ways one of the ways that we can see that we've reached this limit is by understanding the difference between conventional oil and unconventional oil so conventional oil like the way that we drilled oil back in the day um, these massive wells that we would just tap into and they would gush, you know, bi billions of barrels of oil. This, this has changed. We, we are now moving into different types of um, methods of production because we no longer can find these, these wells. So we've moved into different parts of the strata, shale. And that's what fracking is. So you can see in in the um, history of oil production um, in the United States, um, we can see that in the 1970s there was a precipitous decline, and that was because these barrels uh, or these um, these wells dried up. And it wasn't until 2008 where our production resumed and uh, because we got into fracking. The thing is that with fracking, the wells dry up a lot faster, so we have to cover a lot more ground. And 
once we use the fracking oil, there's nothing left. So, uh, so these oil, coal, and natural gas companies have been predicting that peak oil would occur in, in about 2020. And they've been predicting this for a long time. And in fact, they're, they're talking about it today. Um, we're, we're not, we're not hearing them talk about it, but they are. Um, so you can see that we've already reached the peak in oil production in a lot of these regions. Um, this changed in, in the United States, so we began to resume our oil production. Um, but Europe, Russia, um, the Middle East, all the, the regions of the world have already experienced their peak within conventional oil. So what's left is unconventional oil. And so as we, as we begin to tap into the unconventional oil, um, oil becomes more expensive and it becomes less available. So what that means is that uh, because oil makes up such a large share of our total energy consumption, that as there's a reduction in the oil production, as there's no longer growth within oil production, and as there's no longer growth within coal, there, there could be some growth left in coal, there could be some growth left in natural gas, but we will inevitably reach this end of growth in coal and natural gas, and it appears that we're reaching this end in growth in oil. Um, what that means is that the the overall growth of the entire of our of our total energy consumption is it flattens out. There's an, no longer growth within the energy sector, and as if that's true, that means that there's no longer growth within GDP. So that means that when you buy an index fund, you should not expect two to three percent growth per year. Um, that means that oil is going to be more expensive tomorrow than it is today. That means that we're moving into a world in which it becomes harder to get things from far away. Uh, it means you won't be getting avocados from Mexico in, in 10 years. So what we should have been doing since the 1950s, we should have been getting deeply into nuclear. We should have been innovating in the space and building reactors and building um, and building plants all over the world so that we could fall back upon nuclear. But, but we haven't done that. And so we're going to begin to experience this decline in oil before we have something ready to replace it. And that means that we will experience decline, that it is unavoidable. Now there is a black swan, and the black swan is technological growth. It is the singularity within artificial intelligence. It is very possible that we could reach this singularity fairly soon. Um, today, the artificial intelligence bots, you know, the most advanced ones can pass the Turing test. You can, you can no longer know whether you're speaking to a human or an artificial intelligence. Uh, and, and pretty soon as this intelligence becomes more generalized, we can, we can see things, things will happen like the artificial intelligence will be able to animate a robot body and begin to manufacture a factory and to be, be able to make scientific discoveries on its own to build solar panels and make millions of them and 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 uh, automate a, a mine to, to extract these minerals these things will begin to happen at a very rapid pace uh, and that is the kind of those are the and and perhaps it could even perhaps it could even find new ways to generate energy <clears throat> you know by making some sort of discoveries within the realm of fundamental physics. Um, those, those are the kinds of things that could bring us out of the dark age. But all of this infrastructure, all of the machinery that this AI would need to build, be, build, it would take decades. So 
this this dark age that we're moving into is going to occur so along with all of this um, decline in energy there will also be a decline in GDP because we're seeing how we see how tightly correlated they are uh, we we will not necessarily have a decline in technological growth it is still possible that technological growth will continue to occur uh, but we will likely see a reduction in the population so I think that we're moving into this lower scenario here um, that along that this dark age is going to bring uh, a smaller population that we're going to experience food shortages that we're going to experience deglobalization um, we're going to experience a deconstruction of the systems that we depend upon that that the world will become less reliable and and less able to give to us what we need to survive and that we will have to fend for ourselves more and more or cease to exist so it's a, it's a scary future but i do think that it is occurring and that we need to address it with without being afraid by looking at it and by facing it um, directly and by having a rational response to what to how to how to face it um, i think some of those responses that are rational are um, to begin to garden for example if, if we can all start our own gardens if we can become familiar with growing some of our own food we become less reliant upon the systems that are crumbling around us and we become more self-reliant um, that's one example and there are many others and we can discuss those so if you have any questions or comments um, whether you agree with me or not um, please leave a comment subscribe and i hope to explore this topic further so again 2019 was the high water mark and 2019 we will look back on that on that point as being the most prosperous time uh, in the next century that that there will that there will be from here on out for a considerable period of time there will be less energy there will be a smaller population there will be less production there will be less abundance so I, uh, I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but I do believe this is occurring, so let's talk about it. Alright, thank you for stopping by. This is Gonzo, out.